first thing I want to talk about, it's, um, again, as I mentioned, a little bit of a future forward look. Wearable is probably the hottest space. Uh, we're expecting a, a wonderful Christmas around smartwatch and other products that are ready for the market. But if you look a little bit longer term, you look maybe six months, uh, one, two years ahead, uh, wearable will develop and grow very quickly. And one of the big application areas they find is for biometrics. Uh, these are products that are very personal, physically attached to the body, and this offers all sorts of new activities for authentication, all sorts of activity, all sorts of opportunity to replace passwords, to replace credit cards that have swipe and sign. Uh, this company has quite a, an interesting idea, and I want to let them, through their video, explain it first. If we can play the first video for Naimi, please. So the device is wrist-worn, and because it's closed, it's a two-circuit system, it can detect your heartbeat, your heart rhythm. And we all know that you have unique fingerprints, you have a unique iris, but each one of us has a unique heart rhythm that can be used to identify us. So if someone else wears your NIME device, it won't work because it recognizes that it's not you. Uh, so it has to be synced, and it has to be uh, uniquely identified with you, and only when it's worn by you does it work. So I, I think wearable holds the promise to replace passwords, to replace all sorts of things that are fundamentally less secure. So this is, uh, I think, a, a compelling uh, concept, a compelling idea, and, and we watch closely NIME in this space. So we go from something that's a little bit further down the line to a, a product that is right here, right now, and ready. Uh, Micronos is actually joining us at Distry this year. And I want to welcome to the stage, <clears throat> if you'll join us, Sarah Segre from uh, Micronos. But as you take the stage, let's first take a look at what Micronos is all about.
question for you. You have a little bit of a different approach. You, you yes. look squarely at, at the usage. Yes. Um, why is it compelling for the user now? Well, I think it is compelling for the user in the sense that, um, first of all, the approach that we take is we think about design first mm -hmm. because we're talking about wearable technology and we feel that a lot of uh, brands or a lot of tech giants who have entered this market think about the features before thinking about design. And we are designing products that are intended to be worn. So we dedicate a lot of attention as a Swiss brand to what is really what user will be willing to wear. When they go to the store, what would be eye-catching? What would they say, OK, this product, I'm, I'm really First of all, I want to wear it, it looks good, and it will be nice on my wrist. So first, we give a lot of attention to design. As you can see, the Z bracelet really looks like a bangle, like a fashion accessory, and Z watch more like a minimalist regular watch. So then, when we have design, when w w with our team, we have agreed on the design that looks fashionable and that people will want to wear, we adapt the technology and the PCBA to this design. And really, we take the approach about what, what are the features that are meaningful to end user? What is really what they like about their smartphone? How are we going to make their interaction and their communication easier? So it's really about facilitating the, 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 the user experience, his interaction with technology, his communication. So in the product that you have seen and in the video, we have integrated a microphone and a speaker. So it means that as long as your uh, Z bracelet or Z watch is connected to your phone via Bluetooth, you can leave your phone in your pocket, in your handbag, and answer from the watch. Okay. There is a microphone and a speaker. When a call comes in, you see the name of the incoming call, and you can answer by a simple press of button. Instead of having to remove your phone from your pocket or while you're driving or have the hands like busy, it's really to, in just one click, you know, just at a glance, you know what's going on. You have this constant and easy interaction with your, with your, with your cell phone. Mm -hmm. So we would all agree, uh, starting with GFK yesterday, the crossing the chasm. Uh, we've heard a number of other presentations that this is the moment, the, the potential tipping point for wearables. Yes. That it crosses from just the early adopters from the point of innovation, first yes. development, crosses that chasm to become something that really appeals to the mainstream user. Yes. So you talk about fashion. Yes. So fashion on wearable is just as important as function. Yes. Uh, what else do you think is critically important in terms of appealing directly to that mainstream user? I think that two things that are extremely important is price and compatibility. Because again, a lot of brands who have entered the wearable market, they have designed and produced and have created products that are strictly compatible with uh, their device or their brand. So what we do is that we take a different approach. We really try we are designing products that are compatible with both iOS and Android mm -hmm. because once again, it is really our target is to be mainstream, is to really be able to address as many uh, different end users as possible. Mm -hmm. And with this device, for example, it has two Bluetooth chipset, 2.1 and Bluetooth 4.0. So again, and we ensure compatibility with a lot of Android device and with all iOS that have Bluetooth 4.0. And we are developing Windows app at the moment, so it's really our target is have a product that is not only speaking to, uh, uh, that is not only compatible with a few models, but really we're targeting a broad audience. Yeah. And then price, sorry, yeah. but it is still, you know, a companion to your cell phone, mm -hmm. to your smartphone for those models. So we think, are people really willing to spend 200 euros or dollars for a product that is an accessory, a companion to their cell phone? Not really. So those two models are retail price at 79 US dollar. Mm -hmm. We're very aggressive. Our range starts at 59 upon uh, 129, and it's really for us, key that we have a product that is placed at the same price than a regular watch. Mm -hmm. We did not want people to hesitate 
or to have, you know, um, like to, 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 to think about it twice. It is still a complement, an accessory to your smartphone. So for us, it was really key to come up with a product that is affordable and that people will be willing to wear and willing to purchase. Yeah. I think it's a good takeaway when you're evaluating all wearable products. Looking at appeal to the mainstream, it is fashion and function. So yes. it's as much high tech as it is high style. Uh, it's about compatibility, so it could be the iPhone enthusiast in San Francisco or the Samsung phablet fan in Hong Kong, yes. uh, any device, uh, and it's also price, yes. uh, and this is critically important. So where can they come and see you if they want to learn more about Micronos? In the Discovery Lounge and uh, just uh, next to the entrance, okay. Discovery Lounge, uh, Micronos Boost will be happy to introduce you to our different uh, models of uh, smartwatch and collection. and. Uh, and hopefully to make a good business together. Okay. Right. Sarah, thank you very much for <laughs> stepping so forward much. in just a short time to introduce your product to us. Thank you, thank Cheers. you thank again. You. All right, thank you to Sarah. Uh, some of you might have seen uh, another brand name uh, here at the Distri event. Uh, also in the space of wearable, but it's a form factor that is quite compelling. It's not wrist worn or it's not on the face like Google Glass. Uh, but they have a different idea. Uh, we know, you know one of the key applications for wearable is activity monitoring, is fitness tracking. Uh, and this company has, uh, I think, a unique way of doing it. So I want to invite uh, Sonia Benjamin from Ducer Technologies to join me on stage. But first, I want to show you what they're doing before she talks about it. Tell us a little bit more about the, the product and technology. Uh, yes, absolutely. Good morning, Ryan. Good, Good morning, guys. Uh, nice to be here. Um, as the video said, Lechal is the world's first interactive footwear. Lechal means take me along in Hindi, mm -hmm. uh, which you would know, which uh, seems like the ideal name uh, for something like this. Um, and as Ryan mentioned, if you were to count your footsteps or want to navigate, um, the best way to do that is through your shoes. It's the most organic way to do that. Um, Lechal began as an idea for someone who is visually challenged. We wanted to uh, think about how uh, visually challenged people navigate, and we hit upon haptics, which is uh, vibratory feedback. Um, and as we thought that through, we realized it didn't have to be restricted to somebody who was visually challenged. Uh, the idea of haptics, which is pretty much someone touching you on your shoulder, is uh, how anybody uh, can navigate or get attention. So uh, the Technology is very simple. You slip it into your shoe if you choose to buy the insole, or you wear the footwear, or the shoe, and it connects to your uh, phone using Bluetooth technology via an app, and then you use your app to tell it what you want to do. If you want to navigate from point A to B, that's what you tell it to do. It uses Google Maps to do so. If you want to uh, track your activity through the day, you tell it that's what you want to do. And then you put your phone away. Mm -hmm. You never have to look at your phone again. It's hands-free navigation. It's just you and the shoe. Mm -hmm. 
I, I think that's an important point. We're finding that um, you know, the, the best usage-driven features on wearable technology are those that allow them to sort of forget about the technology or hide the technology and to make it a more intuitive experience. Um, can you talk about some of the, the first reactions you've had with users? Are they, is it, is it difficult? Is it something they forget about? Is it something they're aware of? Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the experience of using the product? So um, we use it all the time. I use it when I travel. Um, I was telling somebody the other day, I'm back in Singapore after almost 15 years. So something like this is perfect for me to find my way around the city. And overwhelmingly, the response has been incredibly positive. Um, the product is designed for usability and comfort. As you said, it helps you forget. Um, it's very comfortable to wear. It's uh, very hygienic. It's washable. The electronics are all removable, mm -hmm. so you can throw it in the in the washing machine and again forget about it. Um, and it's uh, there's antibacterial coating. And more often than not, I mean, we've talked to all kinds of people. Um, there has been a real interest because we have received feedback, and our testing also proves um, that this kind of, of um, technology, which is, uh, you know, you slip into your shoe or you wear, is just, it's um, better at counting your steps, uh, t keeping track of your fitness activity, and of course, if you're navigating, you do so with your feet. Yeah. So this helps you uh, put your best foot forward. Put your best foot forward. It certainly makes good sense. If they want to learn more, if they want to get their hands or, in fact, their feet on the product, yes. uh, where can they see you? Um, I'm at the Chill Lounge. Uh, the, the board says Ducare Technologies, which is the company name, and the brand name is Lechel. Okay. So I hope to see all of you there. Sonia, thank you very much.